This is a nuclear fuser I built a couple of months ago. It's cute, but directly behind me is only a test section of the Polaris nuclear fusion generator at Helion Energy. Picture a power plant that doesn't burn anything, doesn't split atoms, and doesn't need a steam turbine. Instead, it fires like a camera flash, again and again, turning tiny bursts of fusion into electricity. That's the bet Helion is making. Helion's mission is to build and deploy low-cost electricity for the whole world. We know the rest of the universe is powered on fusion, and I believe that we can do it too. Their reactor is not a steady flame. It is a pulse, timed to the nanosecond, driven by magnets that squeeze plasma into fusion conditions. The challenging part is how do you get that target, that initial fusion fuel, into the compression chamber and do it in a repeatable, symmetric, high-energy way. Stay with me as we step inside the sideways hourglass, follow the plasma donuts, and see how the same capacitor bank both starts the shot and catches the payoff. This is fusion, built for speed today. Why pulses beat a long burn? Most fusion plans chase one long reaction. They try to hold plasma steady for so long that it can heat water, spin a turbine, and make power the old way. Helion goes the other direction. They treat fusion like a repeating shot. The machine fires many times per second or per minute, and each pulse gives back a bit of energy. Add enough pulses together, and you get a power source that can run like an engine. This approach also changes the goal. Instead of keeping plasma alive forever, you focus on making one pulse clean, fast, and repeatable. That sounds simpler, but it creates its own kind of pressure. Every part must reset and line up for the next shot, over and over, without drifting. The reward is big. If you can pulse reliably at a high rate, you can build a compact system that skips a lot of heavy thermal equipment. And because the pulse naturally ends, you can design around brief, intense loads, rather than constant heat soaking. In Helion's view, the best fusion plant is closer to a high-speed generator than a slow boiling kettle. But pulsing does not mean small. Each shot can be intense, and the machine has to recover quickly. You need fast fuelings, fast pumpings, fast control, and parts that can take repeated stress without wearing out. The business side also sneaks into physics. A reactor that fires once an hour is a science project. A reactor that fires once a second starts to look like a product, because you can average the power, predict maintenance, and tune performance like an engine map. That is why repetition rate, efficiency, and reliability sit right next to plasma science on Helion's priority list. When you hear pulse power, think less about fireworks and more about a metronome that never misses. Inside the sideways hourglass, Helion's reactor looks like an hourglass lying on its side. In the wide ends, the formation sections, the machine creates two plasma toroids called FRCs, short for Field Reversed Configurations. Think of them as magnetized plasma donuts that carry their own internal field. Helion makes them large at first so they can trap as much magnetic flux as possible. Then, electromagnets push them inward. As they slide towards the center, they pass through a conical transition where the vacuum tube narrows. This is the acceleration region, and it matters because geometry is doing work for you. A smaller bore helps the same plasma become hotter and denser as it moves. The two FRCs race toward each other and meet in the middle, in the compression section. That center zone has the smallest inner bore, but the largest outer build, because it must pack in the strongest magnets and the highest energy density. When the plasmas merge and get squeezed, that is where the fusion happens. Helion's newer machine is called Polaris, but the company often shows the previous prototype, Trenta, because Polaris is busy making plasmas. When you see Trenta pulled apart, you are looking at the same story in pieces. Formation, then acceleration, then compression, all aimed at one violent controlled collision. Catching power without a turbine. Fusion usually gets explained as heat first, electricity second. Helion tries to flip that script. After a pulse, the hot plasma expands. As it expands, it pushes back on the surrounding magnetic field. That changing field induces current in the coils, and that current can be captured directly as electricity. 
Hellion likes to compare it to regenerative braking in an electric car. Motion turns directly into charge. An inductive phone charger is another good mental model. Energy crosses a gap because fields couple, not because gears turn. In Hellion's setup, the plasma and magnets are inductively coupled, so the pulse can recharge the system that launched it. That leads to a key design choice. One big capacitor bank does double duty. It stores the energy to form and accelerate the FRCs. It is also the place where the recovered energy lands at the end of the pulse. In other words, the starter and the alternator are the same hardware. The concept is elegant, but it is unforgiving. If your timing is off, you don't just lose fusion performance. You can dump energy the wrong way and stress the bank itself. Direct conversion is the dream, but it demands discipline on every single shot. The nanosecond choreography. Once you zoom out from the chamber, you run into the true monster, coordination. A pulsed fusion machine is a giant orchestra of parts, and every player must hit the beat. Helion talks about hundreds of thousands of components that must work in tandem. Signals run through optical fibers, and even cable lengths matter, because light covers distance fast. Engineers measure fiber runs to the inch because, in timing terms, an inch is not close enough. It can shift the moment a magnet fires. The magnets themselves may be commanded on nanosecond schedules, while their rise times and the structural loads they create show up on microsecond to millisecond scales. That mismatch is tricky. Electronics think in nanoseconds. Metal flexes in slow motion, and plasma responds somewhere in between. It also means nobody works in a single box. The person designing a capacitor module has to care about plasma behavior because plasma coupling changes the waveform, which changes where current flows. And small timing changes can have huge effects. Move a pulse by a few tens of nanoseconds, and you might get noticeably more fusion. Do it wrong, and the plasma can hit the wall. Or you can punish your power system. This is why Hellion builds like a hardware company and a timing company at the same time. Quartz, cleanliness, and shock loads. The vacuum tube at the heart of Trenta and Polaris is made of quartz, and that choice creates a chain of headaches. Quartz must hold a vacuum, survive near hot plasma, and fit inside a dense stack of magnets without cracking. As machines grow, making large, high-quality quartz tubes becomes a manufacturing challenge on its own. Then came seals. Helion has to develop in-house seals that are structural, vacuum-tight, and tough enough for the plasma environment. Cleanliness is not just about dust, it is about the atomic number. If heavy ions get into the chamber, they can splatter onto the inside surfaces and linger, poisoning future plasmas. So the way quartz is handled matters from the earlier steps, through assembly, through every move on the floor. Fit is equally strict. Helion's rule of thumb is harsh. Any axial length where you cannot apply a magnetic field is wasted space. So the design becomes a game of tiny clearances, chasing a field that stays as uniform as possible, like a solenoid. They play tens of thousands games along the machine, balancing vacuum support, structure, and magnet placement. And when it fires, the main load is not random vibration. It is shocking. Each pulse sends a sharp kick through the structure, and the way that kick travels depends on how each section is anchored. Even the compression tube may need compliance, moving slightly by design, so the machine can survive its own pulse. Magnets at the edge of the possible. To understand how hard the center magnets work, Hellion runs a dedicated magnet test facility. One big capacitor bank feeds a single magnet, so engineers can find the true limits before risking a full machine. The reason is simple. Fusion output increases very steeply with the magnetic field. Hellion often describes the yield scaling roughly with B to the 3.7 power, so improvements in field strength can multiply performance. The target fields are on the order of 15 Tesla, and that demands millions of amps per magnet. Those amps create magnetic pressure on the coil, with an average pressure on the order of 13,000 psi. Spread that over a large area, and the forces become absurd, around 100 million pounds pushing outward. The team compares it to about 25,000 cars, or roughly 58 Falcon 9 rockets firing at once, all concentrated in a small region. 
Physics also plays a dirty trick, called the skin effect. The current lives in only the first few millimetres of material, so heating is intense. In a fraction of a second, the surface layer can jump by more than 100 degrees Celsius, and that sudden heat plus rapid strain creates stress states that are hard to model. The good news is that materials can get stronger at high strain rates, and Helion tries to use that. Still, tiny alignment errors can create asymmetric forces. That is why laser metrology and dense sensors matter, and why failures are welcomed in the test cell instead of the main reactor. Helion's path to fusion power is not about one perfect, endless burn. It is about repeatable pulses, magnets, and timing so tight that an inch of fibre can matter. Trenta proved the basics and delivered huge lessons. Polaris is the next leap, pushing bigger plasmas and faster repetition while the team hunts for net electricity. Whether Helion wins the race or not, their approach shows what modern fusion really is. Hardware, data, and discipline, shot after shot. If they can keep scalings, keep clean, and keep the pulses stable, the sideways hourglass might become a new kind of power plant.